Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So nice to be here this evening. What is the price of freedom? Have you ever thought to calculate it? As a veteran, this is something that I think about each and every single day. Not only because I have personally lost friends while serving, not only because I've lost personal lives to my family, but because everything we do with our time has a consequence. So Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests, I want to take you on a journey right now to tell you a little bit about who I am, where I'm from, why I do what I do, and the mission that I'm driven with, that I'm willing to do, and I'm willing to risk my life for. So real quick, she mentioned I was in the military for 14 years. I was in the Marine Corps first, but I switched to the United States Navy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people that I was in the Navy for 14 years, not because I want their applause. I tell them that I spent 14 years in the Navy so that they know that as a black man, I can swear. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a long line of heroes. My father was Marine, my uncle was Marine, my brother's actually a detective in New York City at this moment. But it was a difficult task being in the military. Away from home, away from family. And things happened outside of my control oftentimes. My youngest brother actually was incarcerated while I was away. Mm -hmm. Trying to protect his country, trying to lead a regiment. I felt like I disappointed my own family. I've come since known that it's not my responsibility. He's old enough to know right from wrong. But as a leader, you take everything on as your responsibility. So after 14 years in the military, after achieving a bachelor's degree in accounting, a master's degree in system engineering analysis, I left the military thinking I should be able to walk into the job of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Only to be told that I was either overqualified or not enough experience. But the military told me that leadership was the most valuable thing in the world. How come these employers weren't getting it? <laughs> so rather than feeling desperate, I decided I'd think out the, outside of the box because I knew that I wanted to be my own boss anyway. So this just forced me into that direction sooner rather than later. Well, there's a lot of jobs you can select that give you that kind of freedom and flexibility. The one that I chose right out the gate was real estate. So I became a real estate agent in New York City. And you'd be surprised, in New York City, because the rents are so high, you can make as much money as someone in, say, middle America selling a $500,000 house, you can make that much from renting an apartment to someone. Because of the fee structure. So a year and a half, I began to build my practice. And the freedom that I had allowed me to spend a lot of time personally developing myself. Anybody an Audible book fan? Audibles? <laughs> I have over 215 books on Audible. Wow. And I typically don't buy a book on Audible if it's less than three hours. I think it's not serious. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the very least, I could just put it on 1.5 speed and just get through it faster. <laughs> so I've always been a voracious reader. Because I heard a joke once, and please forgive me for the, the brutality of the joke, but I heard a joke once when I was 14. It said, if you want to hide something from a Negro, you put it inside of a book. <laughs> And I was like, well, how can that be? Because I love to read. And that spurred on a regimen of just reading every single day. Whether it be a newspaper, whether it be an article online, whether it be an audio book, whether it be a podcast, I decided that I would not let any information be hidden from me. Because <coughs> they say knowledge is power, but knowledge isn't power if not applied. So first you have to acquire the knowledge then you've got to put it into practice, and this is where most people stop short. So, why do I do what I do? I'm a financial advisor. What does that mean, first of all? A financial advisor is not someone who simply sells one thing, like insurance, for example. 
that's someone, that's an insurance salesperson. A financial advisor sells insurance, but they also have their securities licenses. And so there's a difference in terms of suitability versus credibility. And this speech, you didn't mention it, but this speech is uh, 15, 10 to 15 minutes. So, so you can give it, don't worry. I can, I can flow. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you think about suitability, suitability is just in a moment in time, if I sell someone this thing, what's it right for them in that moment? But a year or two or five or 10 or 20, if the product didn't make sense at that point, it doesn't matter. It's not on that person who sold that product. And for me, that's that, that wasn't good. I wanted to be fiduciary responsible to my clients, and so I pushed for more licenses, and I'm currently working on my certified financial planning. Now, why do I do what I do? So doing real estate for a while, I started to just dive more into different podcasts about money and how it works. And how many of you are familiar with the rule of 72? Show of hands. Okay, half the room. Everyone, before you leave today, if, the, if there's only one thing that you leave away with, is understand this rule. Because Albert Einstein once said that interest is the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is interest is never neutral. It either works for you or it works against you. And so when you sit down and do a budget, one of the questions you gotta ask yourself is, is the interest in my life working towards my own interest? Or is it going away from me? And oftentimes we just sit with clients that are unaware of the many ways in which interest runs away from you. Even if you have the money to buy a car outright, you've got $40,000 to buy a new car, and you pay $40,000 for that car, there is an opportunity cost. Yeah. Because now that money isn't there to protect you, to provide later. So there's a lot of things about money that I realized that especially my community wasn't aware of. So I began to read, and I stumbled upon a book called Succeeding Against the Odds by J.H. Johnson. Now, J.H. Johnson was the creator of Jet and Ebony magazines. He built his first fortune in real estate, and then he shifted into financial services. And the magazines, were, he was producing the magazines as a way of raising the consciousness of black people. So we could change how we saw ourselves. So we could see the American dream in its full entirety and develop strategies and ways to get those things. So one of the things that I noticed in reading that book was how much you had to overcome as a salesperson. You see, whether you do real estate, whether you do insurance, whether you work for a nonprofit, whether you're a teacher, everything you do involves influence and getting someone to change an actual attitude. That's sales. So one of the things is to understand how money works, you need to understand human psychology, the fact that most of the things that we do <coughs> in our life require salesmanship, salespersonship. <laughs> <laughs> and so how much time are you spending learning how to be a good salesperson? Now, what I wanna do is give a shout out to a special person in my life that I met through Toastmasters just a few months ago. Her name is Natalie Cole. She owns and operates Our Weekly. She joined Toastmasters after appearing on her lifelong mission to be a, on the show Survivor, which airs at the end of this month. She's on the cover of her, own, of her own paper, and she gave a talk earlier this week that really, it really just blew my mind. The talk was on how to solve any problem. To solve any problem, you need to understand an equation. Now, if you can, if you've got a pen, I want you to write this down. You got the five W's plus the one H. Then underneath that, write a line underneath because that's all going to be divided by B. And the B is for visualization. And that equals the solution to every single problem that you will ever face in this world. Now, who, who can tell me quickly what the five W's are? There you go. Right? So we all learned this early on. What does that come from? Anyone know? It's the scientific method. Right? You ask these questions about any problem. Then the H is 
Now the V, this is something that she implemented that's new that really captured me. The V, the v is for visualization. You see, because if you want to achieve something great, you have to first see yourself in that position. You have to visualize that thing. Otherwise, it'll never happen. So that equation, applying that to, to what I now am pursuing, James Johnson talked about he wanted to change the fortunes of the African American people. So part of that is, OK, you have to do enough research. The solution can't come before you understand the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, the why, everything happened. So that means you have to become a historian. Each and every one of us, it's our responsibility. Once you know that, then you can say, well, where do I want to be? Then you have to start visualizing that. And from that visualization, you have to start a plan. Now for me, I heard about Toastmasters nine years ago. I was doing stand-up comedy, I was in the Navy, I was moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a documentary, it came out in theaters called Speak. It was about the world champion of public speaking. And I saw this amazing, beautiful black woman give the performance of a lifetime, win the world championship, and instantly the visualization became for me. Because I saw someone that looked like me in an organization like this that I've never heard of, from the grand stage, competing against 30,000 people, and I said, I'm gonna do that. But then I stored it in the memory banks and then I kept doing what I was doing. Because I didn't write out a plan right then. But now I'm back. <laughs> and I'm on a mission. And my mission isn't simply to win the world championship because I want the accolades of being a world champion. That would be great. But it's the content of what I plan on talking about that's going to make the difference. Because whether I win or not, if I can get to that stage, all the people that will be helping me to achieve that goal through helping me through evaluations, by showing up, by sharing the content, we will change the narrative. We will get the message out that people need of the five W's, the one H, over the visualization to achieve our goals. And so before I go, I want to leave you with a couple of more couple more resources, so to speak, a couple more books that I think has to be on everyone's agenda. If they say that restoring economic equality is important to them in this country, The Color of Law is a book you've got to read. The Color of Law. Additionally, there's another book, The Color of Money. And then finally, a book called Dream Hoarders is a book that you must read. Because when you combine, when you take all of these books together, it gives you the full picture of what was systematically done from a real estate perspective and how that affects education and the quality of, of education that students in lower economic, socioeconomic communities can actually achieve. Dream Hoarders talks about how it's not the 1% that are really the enemies of the middle class. It's the, the upper middle class who hoard the dreams, who hoard the opportunities, who create unfair advantages through things like unpaid internships. Look, reading that book, you see how something so innocuous as just a, giving someone a free internship, how that changes the fate of their life. Because your network is your network. And who you're able to associate with determines opportunities that you're able to receive. For example, I went to a wedding this weekend with a friend of mine, African <coughs> friend of mine from Costa Mesa. He just got married, he's 32 years old. He works for a very prominent wealth management firm in Beverly Hills. He makes approximately $250,000 a year base, and his only job is client relations. Sit down with clients, talk to them about their portfolio, and make them laugh, make them smile. Make them feel good. <laughs> Seriously, that's the job description. Relationship management. Well, because I know him, the opportunity has presented itself for me to walk into that same position. But in that position, I can only sit down with high net worth clients. So that means that those who don't have the 250,000 liquid, I won't be able to help, so they think. But as long as I use this, this 
holding him. And occasionally this lecture to lean on. <laughs> I'm going to have the opportunity to speak and teach and help people understand this equation. The five W's, the one H, and the V to take us home to victory. Madam Tosin. <laughs>